my dear, dear diary. I am so happy. This has been the best summer of my life. I am a student now, and I am going to the village with mom. We will have strawberries and tea on the terrace. I am taking my favorite guitar. What a beautiful summer. What a wonderful life is waiting for me. A Chinese friend made me a guitar. So I started playing the seven-string guitar. I played it quite well. He played it well, too. I started when I was about 10 years old. He saw me in the park. It was a sunny day. He was too shy to approach me. I saw him in the corner of my eye. There was some sentimental song playing in my mind. I'm trying to remember it now, but I can't. Something sad, for some reason. Maybe it's because I'm leaving the city for the whole summer and won't see him until autumn. People were staying at their daches, drawing pictures, making jam. Nobody expected it to end that way. There were no passenger trains, so we walked to Leningrad. We couldn't recognize it, though. Tape was crisscrossed over all the windows. All the shop windows were blocked with sandbags. But they left some of the statues, like the bronze horsemen. But even that was also covered with sandbags. So we couldn't recognize our own city. In a day, the whole city was locked down. The streets emptied. My last friend left Leningrad. At least mom and dad are with me. We're not going anywhere. We will stay until the end. I know this war will be over soon. They said on the radio that it won't be for long. We are a big and strong country. I know it will be over soon and I will see him. He will be back and we will be happy. The first bombs hit house number 109 on Nevsky Prospect and my dad's factory. The Germans wanted to bomb everything, the Moskovsky railway station and the train tracks leading to Moscow. They were dropping bombs everywhere. There were so many casualties. When I heard about it, I rushed to my dad's factory and met my geography teacher there. He knew my dad well. They had served in the Imperial Army together. And he told me, your father's alive. Don't worry about him. Dad told me there was no place to escape to, so they just had to carry all those bomb victims who had lost their legs or arms. He's somewhere on the front now, fighting the fascists. He must be really close. The Germans are already in the outskirts of Leningrad, and I haven't got a single letter from him. How is he? Is he wounded? I still dream about food. There was a fishmonger next to us on Rubenstein Street. They kept several kinds of sturgeon in a tank there. Huge pyramids of caviar and crab were on display. The shops were always full of goods. One day, Mum went and saw that all the shelves were empty. 
things disappeared like that in a flash. After that, they started food rationing. This is terrible. We're threatened with starvation. We only have 125 grams of bread, but soon we'll only have breadcrumbs. A famine is coming, a real one. There hasn't been a single day that I felt full. You leave the table still feeling as though you want to eat. Mom asks me, are you full? I say, of course I am, because I don't want to upset her. I don't think we can survive. We will never eat properly again. At least we still have bran. Mom makes flatbread from it. It's not very filling, but at least you feel as though you have something in your stomach. For a little while, at least. Dad brought us Duranda. It's what's left over from making sunflower oil. They used it to feed it to cattle. It was very difficult to chew, but mom tried to make it edible. She boiled it as much as she could, even adding charcoal. It was still dreadful to eat, but there was nothing else, so that's what we had. I'm walking along Rubenstein Street. We all have ration cards and are given these bottles of, well, syrup, they called it. Sort of like sweetened water. Well, someone dropped their bottle. It smashed and all soaked into the ground. I swear this happened. I saw it with my own eyes. People were crawling around, trying to lick what they could off the ground. This is what the siege did to people. In November, they bombed the Badayevsky warehouses. The fire lasted for a few days. It was awful. The fire was huge. The whole of Leningrad could see it. It was the main storage place for all the food in the city. They bombed it so much that the entire storage facility was leveled to the ground. People were eating the earth because it had small traces of sugar in it. I tried to eat it as well, but I couldn't. There was nothing else to eat, so many people ate that. Our dad brought home some glue. We were afraid at first, but then mom boiled it and it turned into jelly. We ate it with vinegar. That's what saved us. I just want to cry, cry and cry some more. I have such a heavy heart. I'm sick of everything, even of life. Starvation and famine everywhere, and people keep dying. Sleds carry the dead through the streets from morning to night. Leningrad's population has decreased dramatically. Almost two million people have already died. I visited our neighbor today. Her father died yesterday. He was wrapped in a sheet and taken away on a sled. My only distraction now is my books. We delivered books at the wards, and quite often I would read to the wounded soldiers. Once I went to one ward and said, what should I read? They said, anything but nothing about war. So I decided to read Pushkin's Yevgeny Onegin to them. But he writes about a duel in that book. One of the soldiers said, you promised to read nothing about war. But these two have just shot each other. Well, that was quite awkward. In the hospital today, a wounded soldier told me that if you had died, they would have told me by now. Neither food nor letters can get through this siege. Just be sure to survive. I will wait for you. I have all your pictures, my most treasured possessions. I did my first drawing from a window at the Art Academy. 
That's where the sphinxes can be seen. It's here in my sketch pad. We had to cover the sphinxes with wooden boards. I drew a sketch about that too. It's called View from the Art Academy Window. Today is my birthday. Today I felt full. Dad brought two small frozen onions and a hundred grams of raisins. His whole ration. Mom cooked noodles and mixed oil and boiled onions with them. The noodles were lovely and greasy. The onion completely hid the taste of grease. The first course was jelly made from glue. Mom brought home 150 grams of meat today. What a pleasure it was to eat just a little meat. I tried to make it last as long as I possibly could. It was such bliss. I just want to eat, eat and eat. But most importantly, we are still all together and all alive. Mom, Dad and me. Another spring in Leningrad. I used to love it, and now I hate it so much. It brings no love anymore, only death. Starlit nights just look like a mass grave. Another summer without you. For a whole year I haven't received a single letter from you. I know you cannot be alive anymore. I will never be happy again. This spring is my last. April, all the people of Leningrad went out to clean the city streets. We were expecting an epidemic because the dead were everywhere and there was raw sewage flowing past houses because the sewage system was not working. So they told everybody to go out and clean up the city and everybody did. Even those who could barely hold a tool in their hands went out to break up the ice. Leningrad became so clean, it was a real joy to see it. In May, the tram started working again. I will never forget this day. I can't believe Dad is gone. News of his death was too sudden. Even today, this morning, we talked about him, thinking he was alive, remembering different things about him. We were happy that he looked relatively well. It turned out, though, that by then, he was already gone. I cannot believe he's gone. It can't be. How I want it to be a mistake. It's hard. It's terrible. We didn't even say goodbye. A few days ago, I broke my mirror into pieces. I was waiting for a disaster, and my fears came true in the most horrible way. I cry all the time. There was nobody with him. He was buried in a mass grave. My mom was very ill. One day, Dad said we were not going to the bomb shelter. That night there was incredibly heavy bombing. There was a direct hit on that very shelter, and everyone was buried underneath. Nobody survived. People were too exhausted even to remove the rubble, and it was so cold. The temperature was still 30 degrees below zero, and it didn't get any better. For the entire months of January, February and March, it was so cold, 30 to 40 degrees below. We could never even let the fire go out. Water would freeze instantly. We took the sleds over to Bakunin Prospect. We put little buckets onto the sleds. There was a hole in the ice close to the riverbank. 
Sometimes we went there to get water. It was easy to lose the buckets when we climbed back up the embankment. The water would splash over the rim of the buckets. Pulling those sleds was very difficult because the ground was completely frozen. But still we kept going and taking those two buckets back home. We drank that water and used it to wash. There was nowhere else to get it. The bombing is not as bad as the starvation and cold. I am so thin. Starvation has caused mom's stomach to swell. She's in the hospital. I will not see her again. The doctors say she won't survive. My dear mom, I can't leave you. I don't want to live without you. I'm all alone. Mom, mommy. I spent New Year's Eve of 1943 alone. It was very difficult. We had three separate apartments joined by a long corridor, but all of them were empty because everyone had been evacuated. So I was alone in three apartments. It was dark because we had no electricity, no electricity, no water, there was no heat, and we had no firewood either. The worst has happened. I am sick. I can't stand up and I'm freezing. They're breaking up wooden houses in Leningrad. Outside it is 30 degrees below, inside it's only minus 10. Water freezes indoors. Every day I go by tram to the demolished houses. I just have the energy to carry a single small plank. I'm not using the firewood, just in case mom suddenly comes back. They let me see her in hospital. I went expecting to see her round, puffy face. But I just saw a skinny woman. My mom, my dear mom, she looked so thin lying there. I'm so happy. I have recovered. I've been back on my feet for two days. When I saw myself in the mirror, I was scared. I saw a completely unfamiliar, old and skeletal face. I now look at least 30, but that doesn't matter. Even if I do look like a skeleton, the most important thing is, I'm not sick. Comrades, people of Leningrad, the siege of Leningrad has been broken by the heroic Red Army. The soldiers have built a railway across our liberated country. The Volgostroyevsky railway workers will be arriving today with the first train from the heartland. <laughs> January 17, 1943, the day the siege finally ended. When we heard the noise from our soldiers' guns, we were so happy. The siege took millions of lives. Even now, we don't know exactly how many. So, when the blockade was over, people started sending in food from all over the country. I'm feeling better now. I go to the Alexander Nevsky Monastery to pick grass. Mom makes soup with it. It's a pity there are no nettles in Leningrad. They're quite tasty. We have bread now. The only thing that upsets me still is the bombing. It's more frequent now. Will we stay alive? I even want to play my guitar again. I just wish the bombing of Leningrad would stop. I was really scared by the air raid sirens. There were lots of them. Anti-aircraft guns fired, our planes were flying, and there was a loud roar all over the city. It was terrifying. And the sirens carried on one after the other. I have no idea how our soldiers and officers cope with all that. 
When the bombing is over, I look to the sky. I don't know if God does exist, but I feel he is up there somewhere. They say he doesn't exist, but if you do, please let my love come back down here to earth. I spent most of the siege on the rooftops. Nobody told us to do that, but they were always dropping firebombs. So we had no choice but to get up there to save our homes. Mom says I am crying in my sleep. I said that I was scared of the bombings. I saw him in a dream, wounded and then dead. I saw his pale face and his blue eyes looking at me. His lips were white. He's begging, help me, save me. I'm waiting for you. The dream is cut short by a bombing. The Germans were shelling the city. They knew the location of every tram stop, so we had to move them every single day. They were firing at the tram stops. People were going to work when the attack started. There was nowhere to escape. The shelling was quite far from the buildings around Gastini Dvor and Passage. There was no cover to hide under, so there were plenty of casualties. They were firing at maternity homes, trying to target crowded places. They did that for quite a long time. From Leningrad, Today is the 27th of January, 1944. Our moment of triumph has arrived. Hooray, the blockade is over. We won. We have survived. I want to cry, to cry with joy. Mama survived too. I miss my dad so much. My dear dad, we are alive. How great it is to feel life again. Today there will be fireworks. People are exhausted but they will still take to the streets. My dear, dear diary, he's alive. He's returned from the front. He's lost weight. I have not been this happy since before the war. For the first time in my life, I want to cry because I'm so happy. We will walk along the river. Spring will come to Leningrad again. Now I know that we will have a long and happy life. I am certain of it. Oh, my guitar is here. I can't get it. Vadim, please. What? Help me with my guitar. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, sorry. Well, you know how to treat it better than I do. Sorry I can't play. <laughs> 